don't know how's that looking. Let me fix this. Hold on a sec. Okay. Here we go. Take a sip of water. Start recording episode two. Here we go. Hey, everybody. How you doing? Welcome back to Independent Artists. This is episode two. Uh, thanks so much to everyone that has listened already to episode one. I got some great feedback from some friends of mine uh, through comments on social media and some people text me. I appreciate you listening to me as I do my podcast out of my dungeon basement studio, as I like to call it, here on this Anchor.fm app, which is a really cool app. I really enjoy it. It's very easy to use. Um, this week, I like to talk to you about uh, realizing your dream. Um, you know, people ask me all the time, Nick, what is, when, when did you realize, like what age you had this spark in you to be an actor or for acting? And, and I'm sure many of you out there can remember that time, uh, no matter what you are as an artist, a performer, or a dancer, you know, in a band, acting. I'm sure you remember that one moment. And for me, it was very early, like very early on. I can remember, uh, I just loved performing. Even like way back, I was like seven years old. I was doing one-man shows back then, believe it or not. I was doing these one-man shows in my yard uh, because I would watch uh, cable television, which, you know, was big. I, I Back then, in the 80s, you know, living above my parents' bakery there in the north end of Providence, I... Uh, would do these shows in my yard because we were like one of the first ones to get cable television. And back then, if you remember this company, it was Division Cable. Division. It was this brown box. And I don't know if it was like 20-something, maybe 30 channels. Like, that was a big deal back then. And one of those channels, which was the biggest deal to any kid and teenager, was MTV. My, man, just seeing MTV music videos, that was like something, man. Everybody would come over who had no cable. They would come over to your house to watch MTV. But I remember being up late on the weekends. I had, you know, these immigrant parents from Sicily who were hardworking in the bakery seven days a week. They were tired, and I stayed up at night watching movies like Animal House, Porky's, Bachelor Party. You know, these are not movies I should be watching as a kid. And I mean, and now those movies are like Disney movies compared to the stuff that came out later in the 90s, like the American Pie films and all the stuff they show on television now and all the streaming services. It's like, that stuff was like Disney. But back then, as a kid, you shouldn't be watching those movies. But I did, and I would reenact the whole movie in my backyard as a one-man show. I would play all the characters for the kids who did not have cable or, you know, weren't allowed to watch those movies who actually had parents watching over them. And... I can imagine like a parent going to my mom and my dad saying, why the heck is your son reenacting Porky's for my kid? <laughs> you know, can you imagine that? But, you know, that's that's how it was. It was the 80s. What are you going to do? But, uh, uh, but before I continue, anybody, look, if you're, watch, if you're listening to this on the app, uh, Anchor, there's a little thing that says message. You can message me, send me like a voice, uh, voice message, which would be cool. Uh, just, you know, send me a message through my social media. If you have any questions for me or any comments um, or if there's any topics you'd like me to talk about, just uh, send it my way, make a message. And uh, I can even play. If you leave a voice message, I can even leave, I can even put that into the show, what the uh, question is. But anyway, um, but as a kid doing those one-man shows, that was, you know, kind of like stand-up. Uh, but as a kid, I didn't know what it was called. When you're a kid, I, I didn't know what stand-up was. I didn't know one, what a one-man show was. I, I was just performing. I was just playing these characters for the other kids, making them crack up. And I loved it. I loved it so much. And the only time that I actually was on stage up until that point was a few years earlier in uh, Grade K, in kindergarten, yeah, I was uh, recruited into the season, the season's fashion show. And if you've seen my show, The Last Sicilian, I talk about that moment. Um, I was uh, five years old, right? Five years old in kindergarten. 
and they had were doing this fashion show of the seasons, and not many boys were volunteering to be in this thing, and somehow, I don't remember, I ended up in this thing, and it was like, um, you know, winter, they showed you, it, like, dressed up like uh, winter coats and everything, and then um, spring, you were, I came out as a baseball player, I remember that, and then we got to the summer, summer fashion, that's when the place exploded. Here I am, this five-year-old, I come out with this big beach towel on, the music's playing, I, I don't remember what song it was, but there was a certain point at the song, the teacher would give me the cue, and I would have to throw my towel off and flex, and all I had on was this like little European uh, bikini uh, on, you know, bathing suit, and the place just erupted. They had a skinny little body flexing in this little Speedo underwear. <laughs> and the place was... You couldn't even do that today at school. The, the school would be shut down. The teachers would be arrested. The parents would be arrested probably. But like I said, this is the, you know, that was late 70s, early 80s. Uh, things were a little different. And the place went nuts. People were like, falling out of their chairs, clapping and, and laughing and... Uh, cameras going off, and I, at that moment, I was like, you know what? Um, at that point, I knew, I think I wanted to do this. I enjoyed that attention. I was actually a really shy kid, and that's why I, my family couldn't believe they got me to do that, because I was a very quiet and shy kid, believe it or not. And uh, I was talking to school for like two weeks. and uh, But, you know, and I... I kind of like telling stories i kind of liked you know because I, I was a big movie buff i watched a lot of tv and movies as a kid um uh, i guess you know i was that generation the tv was your babysitter my brother and sister were, were five and seven years older than me they didn't really want to hang out with this little kid so i was kind of on my own i was the kind of kid that I just you know played alone in my room with my gi joes and, and set up storylines and all that and I didn't know how to be actually like a writer at that time, but so what I did was to tell my stories, I would draw comic strips. I would draw, I would get notebooks and I would make these comic stories and books and sometimes short, sometimes long. And that's how I told my stories. I would draw, I'd be, I learned how to become a decent, you know, drawer. And I enjoyed that. I did that for years. And I would, I remember bringing books in of stories that I wrote and, you know, I couldn't make copies of it, so I just handed it to somebody in class, and they would hand it to somebody. And then, as soon as I knew it, I know, every week, people, the whole half the class, were interested in my comic strip and waiting for the next story to come out. So, you know, that was cool. So I've been kind of like this since, like, as a kid, as a storyteller. Um, I probably didn't start writing actual scripts, to tell you the truth, until uh, college, you know. I remember in high school, I was into music a lot more, and I would write music lyrics and, and kind of like poems all the time, but uh, it wasn't in college until uh, the first time I ever used a computer. It was in the early 90s in college, and, and I would, uh, I think, I remember my parents bought me a typewriter as well, and I would write scripts, and I would write stories, um, short, you know, like just little short stories or monologues and stuff like that. Um, it wasn't until high school that I actually really performed on stage. I did, you know, that fashion show when I was five. And then maybe around ten, I did the lip sync contest at the uh, United Skates of America, USA Roller Skate Rink in East Providence. I would, you know, do lip sync contests, won that a couple of times. But my actual first time performing on a stage was at Mount Pleasant High, uh, 1992, my senior year of the... The theater department reopened my last year of high school after being like 15 years closed. And they did the Broadway Follies. And I was in a couple of numbers. And uh, we did a one show only. And uh, it was packed. It was like a thousand people packed in there, this place. It was jammed. It was like people standing up at the back walls. And it was an amazing night. And I was, believe it or not, I was going to go in to, I don't know why, I was going to go into uh, CCRI the following fall as an accountant major. And right after that show, I think it was a Friday or Saturday night, that following Monday, I went to my guidance counselor and I said, you know what, I'm changing my major. I'm, I want to go 
into college as a theater major. And, and that's like the moment I knew. I realized my dream. Like, I knew it all my life since as a kid. I loved doing that. But I think once I did that show on that stage in 1992, I realized this is what I want to do. This is what I want to pursue. And, you know, after college, I pursued it. And then I stopped and I pursued it again. And it was a few times. I'm sure many of you can relate to it. Things happen in your life and you uh, kind of like put things on hold. Um, but I didn't stop very long because every time I stopped, I wasn't myself. I was not myself. I, I was down. I wasn't doing what I loved. And w once I got back to doing it again, man, there was nothing like it. So I, I just, it was my destiny to do it and to pursue it. And, uh, and once I realized probably in, oh, no, no, maybe 06, around there, and then 07, and that's when I really have not stopped since, you know, and uh, in 07, that's when I created my own YouTube series, which I'll, I'll get into future episodes more in detail about that, Bread, Butter, and Bullets, which is on YouTube, and I wrote, directed, and I starred in it, um, and then I ended up doing an appearance in a scene just by accident because uh, I knew the right people. My brother was in the scene in 27 dresses at the bakery and they needed another guy. And by that point, I was like done with extra work. I didn't want to do extra work anymore. And But I knew Ed Burns was in the movie, Catherine Heigl. And so I was like, you know what? I'm going to do it. But I'm going to I'm gonna get more into detail in future episodes about that day. And then I ended up landing that Two months after that, in July, I ended up landing a role in the Showtime series, Brotherhood. So, 07 was a very uh, great summer. Uh, a very a turning point in my career. And I haven't stopped since. So, But before then, there were ups and downs. Uh, California twice. Uh, trying to get to New York. But I'll, I'll get a lot more detail into those stories as the podcast goes on. But like I said, message me if you have any comments, if you have any any um, things you want me to talk about. Uh, I'd love to hear from you. But that that was it. Really, at 1992, being on stage, realizing my dream. And something and kind of really made it definite for me. Something I was thinking about since I was a child. And then 07 was like, boom, that was it. No stopping me after that. No stopping me. So everybody has a dream. Everybody has a goal. It's just up to you to keep going for it. You know what I mean? Uh, I, I, I know so many people over the years from childhood, from high school and college years, uh, people much more talented than me, believe me. I, I don't think I'm the greatest of all time. Um, there's always somebody better than you. And sometimes there's always a lot of people better than you. And there were people that I thought... In those years that were incredible, this guy goes to California or New York, he's going to get somewhere. And, and it's a different story. Once you hit those big places, man, New York or L.A. or wherever, Atlanta is, is booming right now, um, you become the small fish in a, in a big pond. And those people that I, I said, that, wow, they're so talented, they're so good. They, uh, after school, never pursued it. They went out and got regular jobs and did things and, you know, got married, had kids and all that stuff. Um, for me, it came later, marriage and uh, kids. Um, but they did all that. And I'm thinking, wow. I get, there must be something else in you. It just can't be the talent. I mean, you got to have the talent, but you got to have the drive. you got to have the ambition you, you got to have the thick skin to take the rejection over and over again, over year after year. And then getting that high point, like me, 07, on the Showtime series. And like, wow, you're on top of the mountain. And you're like, but it doesn't last long. Then you're back down again, and you have to work your way up again. That's this business. It, it, once you're on top, it doesn't mean you stay on top. 
and like look at these big actors, all the problems they have, you know, in Hollywood and and uh, even then, like you you I remember seeing people on sets like you know as an extra, I'm hanging out and you talk and people are like on sets just to be an extra, just to see if they can get their screenplay to somebody or get an acting job in another movie, and they think that the actor is gonna help them out. Like, you know what I mean? The, the, the actor's gonna, like, oh, yeah, you're, 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 you seem like a nice guy. I'm gonna take you under my wing and, and help you out and make you a big star. They don't really, it's not the actors. Stop trying to kiss butt to the actors, these big famous, they don't care about you. You know why? Because they're trying to get the next job themselves. They are, you know? You gotta, you gotta meet the directors. And most of all, you gotta meet the producers, the guys that make the movies happen. Those are the people you want to talk to, and and show your talent. And but you gotta have talent. Once you enter that room, if you have no talent, you're going nowhere. So, I know I kind of went off on a on a thing, besides uh, re- realizing your dream, but that's that. You know what I mean? So if you have any uh, comments, or anything you want to say, let me know. Thanks for listening to episode two, and I'll catch you next week. Okay? Ciao, everybody. Ciao.